So the first uh, topic we wanted to look at um, is the personal journey to growing a successful e-commerce business. What's quite interesting is everyone's come from their own um, different environments and found a niche that has been working really well for them. So if we can start with Shimmy in terms of your personal journey from where you started, what kind of were your, your challenges and, up, and victories perhaps to, to where you're at at this moment in terms of your e-commerce and your, your business operation. Okay. Um, well, like I said before, I started in 2014, um, at end of 2014. And the hardest bit was, was finding the first product and learning how to, how to find a product. But I think saying that the hardest element of all of it is um, the idea of having a failed product and realizing that it's not a big deal and it's very normal. And many of our products have failed. And, and again, I've seen so many people um, just through, you know, teaching and helping other people. I see so many people where their first product or one of their products fails. And as soon as they have a failed product, that's it. You know, hand the towel in, it's done, it's over. But in actual fact, a failed product is, um, can be a lot better than a successful product because you learn so much more from a failed product um, of what not to do. Um, so our first product actually ended up being quite successful. Um, our second two weren't as successful. And then we went on like a crazy five or six run of successful products. Um, and then we had a, a couple more uh, random failures. And again, that's just with Amazon. In terms of where I went from there, which was um, YouTube, I think the, the, the hardest bit about the YouTube journey for me was the, the constant persevering through it um even though you know my first videos or my, my first videos my first few hundred videos were getting you know between 10 and 50 views and i i i did a i did a 100 day challenge when i first started youtube and it lasted about 250 days of posting every single day and i think i got like three and a half thousand subscribers from that um and by the end my videos were getting maybe a hundred views um and even then at that point it I wasn't making any money from it. It was just like, what the hell am I doing? Um, and that taught me one of the biggest lessons, which is just, you know, persevering and not giving up. If something is difficult, if something you don't see an immediate, uh, uh, an immediate reward, then it doesn't matter. I mean, the whole get rich quick schemes that are all over the internet now are such, are such rubbish. And you've really got to, you know, pay for the long game. So think five years in the future, think, you know, 10 years in the future, Hopefully, you know, not everyone can do that because some people have expenses and things that they have to pay for right now. Um, but if you have the, if you have the, um, the luxury, I should say, the luxury of being able to look five years in the future and plan for five years in the future, it, it broadens that, 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 that room, that, that room for failure. Um, and it kind of makes it non-existent because you can fail a hundred times in that five years as long as by the end of the five years you kind of come through. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's with Amazon and YouTube. In terms of print on demand, I got really lucky with print on demand, I should say. I, my designs took off very quickly. Um, now it's a bit different. It's a lot more competitive, a lot more oversaturated. And um, again, I think, I think all of these different businesses, Amazon, print on demand, YouTube, doesn't matter what physical, digital, whatever it is, the one true consistent thing of all of them is just, are you going to stick with it until you see it work? Or are you going to stop as soon as it gets difficult or stop when it, uh, when, when something doesn't work, when something doesn't go your way. And, you know, if you're the person who can stick with it, then you'll be absolutely fine. So, yeah. That's um, quite inspiring. I think you had, you mentioned a hundred day challenge, which lasted 250 days. Yeah. That, that was just uh dogged perse perseverance to, to keep going and keep keep moving and until you know you get what you're uh, adamant on so kudos to you for keep keep going and yeah thanks for sharing sharing your insights and story um dan if you can uh, go next please for sure i think uh i can lead on from what Jimmy said as well uh when i began actually i kind of took the the plunge with it because I actually sold my car to fund my first order for two reasons. One, to fund the order, but two, 
because that would kind of lock me into you know get things done work on this um and so that's what i did and i started i remember the first order uh, cost about three thousand dollars a portion of that those funds and i remember the first product worked really well and that's still a product i sold today uh, and then as shimmy said then i had a failed product quite similarly to him and then i had a really successful product and that's what i would model on from <coughs> Uh, from that point onwards. Um, and at that same time, I had another failed one. So there was two failures in the initial period and two successes, but that taught me exactly what to focus on. Um, and then I just started replicating that, double downing on, on exactly what worked. So it does take time. And I think another thing is choosing the wrong product is never the problem. It's having way too much inventory of the wrong product because you can always change the idea. It's having too much. So that's another thing I learned is don't over order. It's much better. It's a lesser evil to run out of stock, you know, than have, that's always the biggest problem I think you can face with private label um, and FBA is having, you know, 2000 units, you cannot move. That's really the issue there. Uh, so, really that i mean that was the initial part and now uh one of those orders could cost thirty three thousand dollars so when you look back on it it's like this the smaller amount of capital really grew into something a lot bigger um, and you can 100 percent do that you just have to persevere they are going to be but now luckily i think you you know you have the internet you have people to learn from for free for totally for free. So don't order, you know, 3000 units of a product you're not quite sure on. Order less, learn from people who will tell you that and then order less and keep going. So you don't have to make those huge fumbles. Um, but really that th that's just an intro to it, go. Um, and then I do have some points here on, you know, if I was to start again, what I would change but I think that may be a different segment. We'll, we'll, we'll go into, we'll go into uh, the next, but yeah, thanks for sh okay. uh, sharing that, uh, Dan. But yeah, sure. it's a good commitment and a scary one as well, but you are adamant in terms of what you wanted us to, uh, selling a car to pursue your, your dreams and your focus. And as you mentioned, is uh, there's no such thing as a bad product, it's having too much of the bad product. And then, you know, being kind of, uh, not necessarily pessimistic, but being cautious and resourceful with what can and uh, cannot work and being quite adaptive. Um, great. Um, Mike, if you can go next, please. Okay. So, um, so yeah, my journey, I, I basically, when I started, I was at rock bottom in my life. I'd lost everything. And I think going back to the, the perseverance thing and, uh, yeah, you, you've got to be perseverant. You, you, I've had businesses in the past that have failed. And, and, and when I started this journey, this chat, we'll call this the chat, this chapter of my life, um, I, like I say, was at rock bottom. I had nothing. And my, my challenges at the beginning were being able to provide an income, being able to pay bills. Um, and basically, I remember I had a conversation when I first started with my partner and I said, look, even if I can just do 25 pounds a day to start with. And that was my target. And, and that's it. That, that seems so like so long ago now, but that was my target. And it was set, set myself a goal and, 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 and try and achieve small targets every, and, and every month I'd just increase that and increase that and increase that um, to a point where I could afford to buy stock. And I think, yeah, it's, with business you've got to make sure that you you don't rush into everything um and and take things slow and and set yourself like small baby steps i think and that's how i got from nothing to to something um so if that makes sense no yeah i think uh, it's um it can be you know very difficult to to have uh, difficult situations but then still kind of persevering i think that's kind of the key premise but Beyond that, it's uh, people think it's easy, it's simple. People like to see at the end of the the, the, the journey, 
that it's always been simple and, and easy in these kind of it's, it's uh really appreciate you you sharing your, your story okay. in that context and then, you know you've uh, done pretty well with the the, the jordan jerseys hanging <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah it's crazy i think as well like research as well so like one yeah. of the things that resonated with me is um someone was like how many um how many tv series have you watched how many computer games are you playing um like what how how many hours have you put into watching breaking bad or whatever and you work it out and you you you, you will put hundreds of hours into that but people don't realize if you, if you just sacrificed that playing the playstation or watching a box set and and researched what you want to actually go into um then you, you can make something from it and I, I think that's a lot of people just will not put the hours in uh, and won't do the research behind um the, what they want to do i think that's one of one of the things for me is everything i do i research and make sure that i know i've, I've thought of all the outcomes or what what the possibilities are how, how much i'm going to make from this product and how, who's selling it what's my competition and things like that so i think research is a massive part of it as well yeah d definitely i think um, you guys are adamant uh, sorry uh, examples of you know research being meticulous being focused on what you're doing is paramount to success and it and it takes it takes time there's there's no shortcuts so yeah uh, thanks for sharing uh, your your insights and story mike and zane finally if you can uh, share yours as well it would be great thanks so it's a long story i will keep it short uh, grab your popcorn in the meantime so let's let's really get started uh I was uh, working as a product manager in a telecom company. And uh, one day, just all of a sudden, I said, what I'm really doing with my life, like what I am actually doing. And on the same day, I, I resigned that true story. And I just uh, thought, what I'm going to do? And I said, in a, in a worst case scenario, what I can do is I can move to the living room and I can rent my bedroom on Airbnb, and this is the way I will be able to pay my expenses. I wasn't married back then. I had no responsibilities or whatsoever. I was uh, still waiting for my salary to come. As soon as my salary came and I said, I want to start something. I want to do something on my own. I want to start my own business. Uh, I went to the council. I was living in London at that time, and I went to the council and I said, how much it will be to have a pop-up stall? Uh, inside a market and they told me 35 pound and I said that's fine I had a stall and I uh, uh, went to the warehouse in a south hall and I bought some mobile phone and accessories and I I just start running a stall <laughs> outside inside the coal and I I remember my country manager came to me from the telecom company I said what you are doing I mean you was a product manager in our company and now you are standing on a stall today it's really strange I mean uh, I, I mean, your salary is really good. And I said, no, I want to do something on my own. And that's what I want to do it. So from that stall, moving on, uh, I leased a shop uh, in Dalston, Kingsland. The most of the people who are Shamis from London, Gul, you are familiar from London as well. Uh, Dalston, Kingsland, it's in Hackney. So I had a shop. I had an internet cafe. I have a mobile phone shop close to the Barclays Bank there. And I had that shop for about seven years. And uh, to the point when the way I started the e-commerce was from that shop, I, I said, because it is paying my expenses, that's fine, but I'm not able to save much money. So I need to really find another way to make more money. And what can I do really? And that's, I said, well, I have a stock already inside my shop. Why not list this stock online and see how it's going to go? And... Uh, my parents as will say, well, leave that. You was you have a real business now. Why you are moving toward a business which is not even real? But I had to really diversify my income. I need I needed to find another source of income. So I started selling online uh, slowly, 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 slowly to to the point uh, when I realized like eighty percent of my revenue was actually coming from just online. And I just waited for one year because in the business, you're never sure. Sometime your income can go up, some kind, sometime your income can really go down. So after uh, waiting one year uh, to really understand how much money I'm consistently making per month, 
And then I just sold the business. And even from selling that physical business, I put all the money inside the e-commerce. And ever since then, I've just been a full-time full -time e-commerce seller. In the terms of your question of, is, did I have any hiccups during the business or anything like that? Uh, many of them. And I'm not really going to bore you with the details because like, I don't want you to feel emotional, really. Don't, don't worry about that. But keep it short, keeping it short, like there will be many things and that's the way the businesses are and that's the way the life is in general. But we just got to keep going. And one day, if I tell you five years from now, you will be here in this position. If I had a time machine, I, I will show you like five years from now, you will be here if you just keep on doing what you are doing today then you will not give up. And that's like was the same. Many hiccups, but I just kept going. And then today I make good amount of money. I wish to make more, but I, I still am keep going. Th thanks for sharing that, Zain. And it's a big, big uh, move, especially as well, where if you have a steady, stable job and then, you know, to, to try something new and people and peers would be very confused as to, to what, what, why, when you have a, a stability, and why would you want to go in the, in the unknown? But I think ultimately it's some, you know, thanks guys for sharing some very inspiring stories and, you know, showcasing with uh, the audience. Hopefully you guys can see that nothing comes easy. Uh, nothing is guaranteed or a given and success is not coming tomorrow or day after, but it will, should one stick along for the, the long run. So thanks a lot guys, it's uh, some, you know, I myself feel quite quite inspired by hearing everyone's story. So thanks a lot for sharing um, that. Um, and hopefully it's uh, inspired a few people as well as to just keep staying persistent, keep uh, evolving, keep adapting and uh, not giving up when things get difficult.